Hello YouTube friends, welcome to The Last Homely House. I'm Kate and today I want to tell you about some quilts that I've been making. Now, years ago, my, my mum died about five years ago and she used to make quilts for all sorts of people, family, friends, neighbours, but she also made quilts for Project Linus. Now Project Linus might be something you've heard of, you might already be donating quilts to them, uh, and it's uh, she made, I don't know, dozens of quilts for Project Linus, and after she died, I found in her stash a whole load of small quilts, baby quilts, toddler quilts, and got in touch with the Project Linus rep from her area where she lived and um, they came and picked up the ones that were left that were intended for them. Project Linus is a charity that uh, where people donate quilts for children in hospital or in difficult situations, babies, children, poorly sick children, teenagers, any young person uh, uh, these quilts are given to. You may know about it, but I'm going to leave a link in the description below so that you can find your own local Project Linus coordinator uh, if you wanted to. I'm sure they're uh, not just in the UK. In fact, I th I'm sure they're uh, worldwide. And Linus, Project Linus, the reason why I really like the whole concept of this is that if anybody remembers the Peanuts and Charlie Brown character uh, the, uh, cartoon strip and the cartoons about that, there was a, my favourite character was a kid called Linus who was a little bit insecure and he always had his blanket with him. And uh, I really liked him. He was at uh, the heart of the whole thing. Um, his sister Lucy, uh, he had a lot of um, a lot to put up with with Lucy. In fact, I'm remembering the very first two cats I ever got were called Lucy and Linus. That was a long, long time ago. Anyway, Project Linus. Then I decided. Well, two things. I wanted to experiment with some quilt blocks and make, uh, you know, just try out some new quilt blocks and revisit some old ones and, and show you my process there. But then I also thought that these Project Linus quilts are actually quite small to finish uh, instead of making an enormous huge quilt and I can give them away in memory of my mum. So it felt to me like a really great win-win all round. So that's what I'm going to do today. And the first quilt block that I wanted to visit. Now, this isn't one I've I have made this, but many, many years ago. Uh, it's the Irish chain quilt. Um, and my mum made me a beautiful Irish chain quilt uh, in all blues and greens um, and with a lovely white background. And so I really love that quilt. And she also she set it um, at, uh, at 45 degrees so that the, the, li the lines are beautiful. I really love that quilt. So there's that quilt and then the one that I made a number of years ago and gave to my friend Linda. Uh, she'd looked after my cats for me when I went to New Zealand. <laughs> uh, and I went to New Zealand for a long time uh, and so it was a big deal her looking after my cats for me. So I made her a quilt to say thank you for that and that was an Irish chain. So today then we're going to revisit that Irish chain block with a little twist. If you've made Irish chain you'll know it's a really really easy block to make. Uh, you can do it with jelly roll strips and I got my tutorial um, from Missouri Star Quilt Company. They've done a Jenny years and years ago, did a fantastic tutorial on how to make the Irish chain. It's a simple, very, very simple quilt block to make. And uh, so yesterday I put one together. I had a fat quarter bundle that I'd bought of these fabrics. Let's have a look at them. All these really bright, jolly fabrics and so I had this fat quarter bundle and I also had have a lot of yardage of white and this is white with a, a tiny tiny design on it you can barely see it and this was from my mum's stash because there was a little ticket on it here it is and it just said let me I'll show you her handwriting it just said three and a half yards. <laughs> so three and a half yards of this, which I thought would do for the squares and for the backing as well, because these are small quilts. And so I made this quilt. Let me show you. 
there you go so this is the Irish chain quilt it's just a small quilt 35 by 32 something like that so I'll just pin this up on the board behind me while we're talking can you see that okay I'll sit to one side so that you can see it what I love about this quilt is this simple block construction when you put it together it gives this traveling kind of square going through it there so I made that one, I just, this is just the quilt top there. I haven't quilted it yet. I made it yesterday. And when I looked at it, and I really like it, but I thought, what would happen if I made the squares smaller? There would be, um, it would be a little bit more of a busy kind of quilt. These are two and a half inch strips up here. But what would happen if I made the strips two inches? So I'm going to show you my process of making this quilt block but instead of making it on this scale I'm going to make it ever so slightly smaller. So I'm going to show you now the different stages of making this Irish chain quilt and we'll end up with a second quilt top that'll be um, with smaller squares in. How do you fancy that? Come on then, let's do it. So I'm in my little sewing machine corner here now and what I've done is I've cut strips of two inches wide of the uh, colourful fabric and two inches wide of the white. Now, this was a fat quarter bundle and so this is half the width of fabric here, which actually works fine because uh, what I want to do in the next stage is uh, stitch these to the white strips but I want some variety. When I make up the blocks, I don't want there to be uh, the blocks all the same. You'll see what I mean when I start doing this. So the fact that these are half uh, the width of fabric is fine, absolutely fine. So I cut myself a whole load of those and some white, and then I've stitched some uh, quilt um, strip sets like this. So we've got uh, colourful fabric, white colourful fabric with a quarter inch seam all the way along there and I'm going to do another one of those now so I'll just angle you down slightly so that you can see what I'm doing so right sides together I've got my little thread bunny here that I have at the beginning and end of each run you could do a leader and ender there and I have done that in the past and then your quarter inch seam all the way down. Okay, so when you've got it like so, you're going to press that open. So you need strip sets like that, but you also need strip sets that have got, um, let's just sort this out for you. I'll use this dark coloured one here, and one of my two inch strips. cut that to the same length as the black one and what I need to do now is sew this strip with one of these on either side so that I've got uh, a strip like that with two and a strip like that with one then the whole thing comes together really easily let's do that next On one side, and then making sure with this stuff, when it's got a, a, um, a very faint pattern on one side, it has got a right side and a wrong side, and you just need to make sure you get the right side together with the right side. And now I'm going to take these to the ironing board and press them and I'll show you how I do that. So with this one, 
with the two colourful pieces on either side of the white. As with everything to do with quilting, you're always going to press to the dark side. <laughs> I always love it when Jenny at Missouri Style says that. Press to the dark side. And then those seams then go out like that. And then with this one, again, you're going to press to the dark side, but this time your seams are going to go into the middle. And that means, you know that means, that your seams will nest beautifully when you put those together. So we're just going to press that one, the white bit, inwards. Same with this side. And then just give the outside a final press so that you've got no pleaty bits. There we go. So now once you've got your strip sets, and so one white in the middle and one colourful one in the middle, next you want to cut subcut these now into two inches. Now however wide that strip is, that's how wide your pieces are going to be cut. So let's do that now. Um, let's make some space here. I'll just neaten off this edge. And then I'm just going to cut two inch sections out of this strip set and that one too. Now you need exactly twice as many of the strips, of these strips, exactly twice as many as with the single colour. And you'll see why when we construct this block why that's the case. So some of those and now some of these. Okay, so some neat the edge off there and then some two inches. I think this is going to look great with the smaller block. It's going to have been worth doing this again. There we go. And now, once we've done that, then we need a block like so and then one in the middle. And then I'll just choose a different one. This is why I'm trying to make them uh, a few different strip sets so that that one goes like so. And then we sew those three together and you get a nine patch. It's a simple little nine patch that I'm making here. So next then I'm going to sew these together and I'll show you how I do that. OK, I'm at the machine now and I'm just going to check that they're nicely distributed and sew them together. Now this is where the pressing that I just did works really well because these two seams nest together beautifully with the fabrics going in opposite directions. I'm very fond of the nesting seam. I really like it. Okay and now it's just a question of chain piecing my way through all of these now. So I'm going to sew two together that are one block and two block, you know what I mean, one of those and one of those and then I'll come back through and sew the other block on. I know what I mean. This is my happy place. There's nothing I like better than sitting at the sewing machine with a big load of uh, piecing to do and the iron on. It's great. I love it. And these little quilts, this will be a quick finish. I'll possibly get this quilt top done today. And Anna's here today and so is her dog, Frank. And he's he's come along to say, what are you doing, Kate? What, what are you doing, Kate? I'm just sewing these strip sets together, Frank. <laughs> <laughs> the workshop dog. It's nearly time for his midday walk. So I've said the W word now. So I think we're gonna lose Anna quite soon. She's gonna to have to go and do that. But really all I'm gonna be doing while she's out is uh, stitching together strip sets. I 
I've sewn loads of these now and I'm just placing them up here. They finish at five inches and so the white square in between is cut at five inches and it's got a pattern on so I'm just making sure that the pattern piece is uppermost. You can see it when the light catches it. But I think the reason why I wanted to make this in a smaller scale is that you can see how different they look and I like the look of this one very much. This one's fine too. So when you place them like I am, you get this beautiful travelling line going through. There's also the double Irish chain. Anybody ever made one of those? They're really lovely. sew that together now. Well it's a couple of days later now and I've finished both of them. I put on the binding but I also hand quilted them. You can't see because it's uh, white. I've quilted in the ditch on this one and I've quilted the diagonals as well in both directions. Just little running stitches with some white and on this one I just did uh, just quilted the diagonals. I didn't do the ditch here and so that one's finished here and I I like that a slightly older child might get this one and then a baby might get this one but then loving the way that just scaling this down ever so slightly gave us this different look I then carried on and made this one and this one is for a little doll so I made this doll's quilt here and with this one the strip was inch and a half so that the finished is an inch and I've just quickly put that one together. I machine quilted this one and I'm not very happy with how it's pulled the squares so I'll, I'll, I may actually unpick that and I thought I'd do a quicker finish with a machine quilting but actually I much prefer hand quilting. So that's what it looks like if you take it down again. So I really like how that's looked. I'm not going to go down to an inch now pretty much because I've run out of, of fabric. But this was one fat quarter bundle that made these different size quilts, which is quite good. Yeah, so that then is going to be the first of my Project Linus quilts that I'm going to uh, get in touch with our, my local rep uh, and see if they would like these. Uh, so, but I also I've got some ideas for some other quilts that I want to make. And it's an opportunity for me to try out some quilt blocks and make a small quilt and then find a new home for it. So that's what I plan to do with these. And so if you've enjoyed watching this video, give us a thumbs up and subscribe, which is that little button down in the corner. And when you subscribe, if you hit the notifications bell, that means that you'll be notified that you won't miss any time that I post something new like this. So maybe we'll call this the Project Linus series and I'll make another one in a few weeks time and we'll post that one up here. But in the meantime, uh, thank you so much for watching. If you wanted extra content, I post every week over on Patreon and I have my monthly diary there and some other little bits and pieces that I share with patrons. And so the description below, there'll be a link to it there, but there's also a little bit coming on the end of this video and we'll, we'll put it in there as well. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time with something else. Mm -hmm.